we are returning we were experiencing some small difficulties if you have just tuned in you have tuned into motivation speaks with angel ferguson on this september 27 2017 we would love to connect with you if you would like to connect with us our email address is a ferguson wrp at yahoo.com our mailing address is 7402 North 56th Street, Suite A and B, Tampa, Florida, 33617. Our telephone number is 813-336-2181. If you would like to listen to our podcast after our live airing, please visit iHeartRadio and check out The Balance of Life. You can also listen via our YouTube channel as well as on iTunes. If you would like to subscribe to our magazine Hope and Truth, please visit the online magazine at hopeandtruthmagazine.weebly.com. You can also subscribe for a yearly subscription at $36. Women United in Praise, stepping into my new season, Women of Destiny invites you to come and celebrate who you are. This event will take place October the 21st at 4 p.m. and the speaker for that day is Pastor Angela Green, of True Life Community Worship Center. And on Sunday, October the 22nd at 10 a.m., Prophetess Floyd. Behold, I will do a new thing. This event is being held at the Word of His Grace Christian Fellowship Incorporated. The address is 2506 South Parsons Avenue, Sefner, Florida, 33584. You can get details by contacting 813-685-9772. Are you looking for a new logo or to enhance the one that you already have? Contact No Mercy HMX Exclusives. The website is www.nomercyhmx.com coming soon will be their online store. The email address is jamesf at nomercyhmx.com. Today, while we are coming live from our bookstore, Motivation That Inspires, we are taking a look at the book by Reverend Author T. Jones, When You Don't Know What to Do, What Should You Do? And I am really enjoying this book the first two chapters are in a storm and don't know what to do background scripture is Matthews 14 24 through 33 and I can certainly identify with what I have read in this book when we reach points in our lives where we question doubt our faith we waver because sometimes the storms in our life are just so heavy <clears throat> but in reading this book I am reminded if my storm is a test of discipline or a test of growth sometimes we can become stagnant and we question, am I in the right place? Am I following the right path? Am I doing things according to the will of God? Your stagnation could be because of discipline or your stagnation could be because it's a time for you to learn and become better equipped for what God has ahead of you that stagnation could be because right now you are not ready 
for what he has coming up next. We must not lose heart or faith during this time, but stay focused. Keep our eyes on God. Confess to him how you are feeling. And as we dig into these two chapters, Peter said, Lord, save me. And something I came across it, when everything is going well, we have these awesome long prayers. But in the time of distress, you can only say the, the thing that comes to you. And, and Peter said, Lord, save me. He did not wait until he was drowning or near drowned. As soon as he felt himself begin to sink, he yelled out, Lord, save me. And if you would like to purchase a copy of when you don't know what to do, what should you do, we have the book here at our bookstore, Motivation That Inspires Bookstore. The price for the book is $10. The text for this message is from Matthew 14, 24 through 29. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to Jesus. Now, one of the sections, place your confidence in him. Here, Peter teaches us that when you're in a storm and don't know what to do, the first thing you do is place your confidence in Jesus. In a storm particularly, confidence can be so easily whipped depleted and shattered. Therefore, it becomes essential for our trust and reliance to be intact because the storm is designed to test us to the limit. That is so very true. If your storms aren't testing you, evaluate where you are because those tests, like I said earlier, it could be a test of discipline. They all are a test of discipline, to be honest with you. It could be a test of correction, where we have sinned and God is, is getting us back on track after our repentance. And then that test of growth, getting you to the next level. And it's so very uncomfortable either way because you, you, you are questioning, am I in this path? Did I deter? Did I think I could do this on my own? Have I taken credit for, for the things that I know only he can do? So evaluate your tests today. And then it goes on to say is, is let us not overlook the fact the reason the disciples were in this storm was because they followed the orders of Jesus. When we follow the directions of God, we are going to be tested. Our faith, our commitment, our focus, our dedication is going to be tested. Rest assured that as you surrender and as you say, God, I surrender unto you and I will go where you have me to go. Where well, he says, when we say, here am I, send me, when God says, who shall go? And we say, here am I, send me, you shall be tested to see if you will hold up and stand to those words that you will in fact go. Because lip service is one thing, but action is another.
Jesus was the one who suggested in verse 22 that they go to the other side. Here, Jesus told the disciples to do something, and they finally did it. And then all hell broke loose. Now that's a real blow to their confidence. You're in a storm because you did what Jesus said to you. I know I can identify with that, and I'm quite sure you can identify with it. When we get an assignment from God, and it's not going to go according to how we think it should go. We just need to be equipped on how to handle it. Because when we get that assignment, we have it pictured in our mind, oh, it's going to go this way. And, and, and because we automatically have the outlook that everything is going to go smooth. We must be tested to prove our faithfulness, our level of spiritual maturity. God will test us in these areas. Peter and the disciples, disciples were on their way to the other side. Suddenly their ship was in the midst of a storm at sea and it was commandeered by a boisterous storm. Verse 24 says, they and all their cargo are tossed like wood chips from a horror's axe. A dozen men, picture this, maining the oars, battling with the tempest, and fighting through the dark hours of the night with a storm-whipped sea. What the writer next describes is, they saw death. They saw that they were trying to get to the other side and take control of the ship even though they were in the midst of the storm. They saw that they were getting nowhere. Have you ever been in that place that it seemed like no matter what you tried, it's like you're not getting anywhere? And you question and you ask yourself once again, it's a repetitive question, but we all do it. What am I doing wrong? Am I not following all the directions? Seems I'm not getting anywhere. But I stepped out in faith. I followed the directions of God. God, where? what is this assignment? It is in your faithfulness and obedience to do the assignment. It goes on to say that it has been nine long hours since they left the shore. It is the fourth watch, somewhere between 3 and 6 a.m., and they have made very little progress. They are exhausted, shocked, and fear. They are frightened out of their wits and struggling for their very lives. Then, suddenly in verse 26, they see the master walking from wave to wave towards them across the sea. God used the very waves that had threatened the disciples' lives as pathways for the Lord's feet. And I'm skipping over sections of this book. Here we find that now Jesus is walking on the water towards the ship, towards his disciples. And for some reason, they did not recognize him. In verse 26 says, they take him to be a ghost and they cry out, cry out in fear. Why do they cry out in fear? Their mental and physical condition is very important at this point. They were physically exhausted, mentally drained, and psychologically abandoned. Because remember in this text, Jesus told them to go to the other side while he dispersed the, the, the multitude of people. So you can imagine the thought process. He sent us to go to the other side and now we're going to die. 
the thought process probably came in is, is he trying to get rid of us? Why did he send us? Why didn't he come with us? All kind of things will go through our minds in the midst of our trials and tribulations. But we must remind ourselves that he said he will never leave us nor forsake us. And even in the storm, their thoughts were saving the ship and, and, and saving themselves, actually. But Jesus was all already on his way in the capacity of a savior. He was already on the way. He never forsook them. He never, he never left them unattended. Even when their eyes and their focus were not on him spiritually, it was on the circumstances, he was still watching over them. That's something that we all must understand. Even though I'm going through what I'm going through, he's still watching over me. Jesus is still making intercession for me in heaven to God the Father. Everything could be going on all around me. The wind, the rain, the hail. But he's watching over me. He's already on his way to bring peace in the midst of the storm. He's already on his way to deliver me. Another area to look at is, is these disciples were spiritually shaken. No matter what they did, it doesn't matter. Nothing was changing. And I have to tell you, that's a storm. But we must be fervent and continued in prayer, never ceasing, never giving up, until we see the manifestation of those changes come forth. If you have just joined us, you've joined Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson. And we are in the book, When You Don't Know What to Do, What Should You Do, by the late Reverend Author T. Jones. If you would like to purchase a copy of this book, we do carry the book here in the bookstore, priced at $10. And the areas in this book, it's actually an interactive book. Subjects are what to do when you're in a storm, part one and part two, in a fix, in the dumps, in a bind, part one and part two, too busy, in a mess. I think we can all identify with those different chapters. Truly, I can. The book goes on to ask some questions. Many times Jesus comes to us in a way that makes us dread rather than welcome his approach. Sometimes he comes with demands for us to give up certain sins or certain pleasures that we do not wish to give up right now. Asking for services that we did not wish to render Demanding surrenderers that we do not at all desire to make right now. In the guise of great disappointment that wets our faces daily with the sea of tears. Sometimes the approach that God makes upon us and asks of us shatters our confidence. But this is not the time to give up. 
Jesus' sudden presence on the water pumped up Peter's confidence, yet Peter and the disciple, disciples were not quite sure it was he. So to calm their fears, Jesus said in verse 27, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Have you ever experienced that? Where that that peace comes in when your mind is frantic and you're you're shedding tears and because you don't know what to do when that peace comes in that calms you that is that is Jesus saying fear not I'm here we can rest in him if we allow ourselves to The next section in chapter one, entrust your confusion to him. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee. Always remember, whenever confidence is in the house, confusion lurks in the hallways. Faith often sometimes renders confidence irrational, so you find yourself having to manage not only your confidence, but your confusion. Why is that? The author goes on to say, because first of all, everything he says may not make sense to us and may not be pain free to us, may not be trouble free to us, and that is confusing because when we go out and, and, and God called me on this on this call and on this journey and we don't think about obstacles. We don't think about struggles. That's not how we start out. We think about, oh, look at this door that God has opened. Look at what he's going to allow me to do. That's what we focus on. But rest assured, there are tests and trials coming within that new level. Say what you will, but when we do what Jesus says and end up in a storm, that is confusing. Just as soon as you decide to try to live right, and I know I can I can identify with this. Like I said, this book, I was so glad that I picked it up off of the shelf and, and decided to read it as we do here at Motivation That Inspires Bookstore. We read the books that come in. The confusing part is you are going to church regularly. You're going to have a storm. You're paying your tithe and giving an offering you're going to have a storm. Reading your Bible daily, you're going to have a storm. You're going to be tested. Uh, attending weekly prayer meeting and getting into Bible study, you're going to have a storm. And if you are having daily devotion, you're going to have a storm. You're going to come upon some tests and some trials and some tribulations. And you think to yourself, just when I started to act right and live right and do right, I encounter all of these storms. Once again, those storms are tests of growth, spiritual maturity that will allow you to in turn to be a witness and a testimony to another soul. Then again, our tests come as with Jonah when we are disobedient. And God needs to get our attention to get us on the right track. And when you do all of these things, you're going to church, you're paying your tithes, you're giving offering cheerfully and with a willing heart, and you're spending time in the Word of God, you're praying, you're fasting, and you start to go through things. And that's so confusing. 
Because the first thought the enemy will put into your mind is, I didn't have this much trouble when I was out in the world. But you weren't a witness of God. You did not have the promise of salvation and eternal life in heaven. You damaged your body by living a sinful life. So you went through some things. It's much different when you are in the walk of Christ, though. The tests are different. The trials are different. Because it's all about that faith walk, that commitment, that trust, that focus. And when you are walking in Christ, we can cry out, Lord, save me, because we have a relationship with him. It, it's not that we only come to him in times of trouble, but we have a, a, a communication with him day in and day out. We know his voice. We have done according to the word of God that he will hear our prayer that he would even hear from heaven for us that our worship has been accepted then too as the author goes on to write nothing we say will make sense either in verses 27 and 28 we encounter the I versus the if issue Christ says, it is I. <laughs> Peter says, if it is you. Why did Peter ask if it is you? Didn't Jesus just say, it's me? Why would Peter say, if it's you? I don't know, but it proves that in a storm, whatever we say will make little sense. It proves that in a storm, what we say and how we feel are in two very different worlds. What I like about this book, it, it's reality. It doesn't sugarcoat or hide behind or pretend. And the writer is transparent by putting himself in scenarios and giving examples of his storms. Today we are looking at when you don't know what to do, what should you do? As we look at the end of chapter one, and we're going to be able to briefly go over chapter two, the storms of life are inevitable, unpredictable, and unpreventable. They can change course at any time and can bring damage, destruction, and winds of discouragement. But be encouraged that even the winds and the sea obey him. And that's Matthews 8:27. Even when you feel that you might be overtaken by the storm, step out on faith and head toward the Savior. Psalms 121 and 3 reminds us, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall never slumber nor sleep. You are never left defenseless or helpless, even in the midst of your storms. If you have faith in God, you should put all you have all your confidence in him as well as all is your confusion particularly in a storm as i was reading this book i came across something that was so very important like i said the writer is transparent don't act like you have it all together when you know that you don't confess your confusion to god God, I don't know what's going on. I, I can't handle what is going on at this very moment. I need you. He already knows that we are in a position of confusion. So why act like we're not? It 
It is no secret that the believer's faith is put to the test in storms. Christ also uses storms to assure the believer he is still in control and all-powerful. He encourages believers to step out on faith in their storms and confront their fears while facing their Christ, even at the risk of sinking. Spiritual maturity involves radical reliance and bold faith in God. Stepping out on faith does not mean that you will succeed each time, or does it guarantee that the storm will cease. However, God blesses those who respond to his call, even in a storm. He is there in the storm with you, waiting for you, and has the power to deliver you. Whether the storms and winds of death, pain, illness, discouragement, betrayal, or deceit arise, if you dwell with, rely on Jesus, and step out on faith, he will save you after his own divine manner and for his own divine will. And as we are looking at chapter 2 in this book, what to do when you don't know what to do. We are still looking at Peter and some of the highlights. Place your confidence in him. The Bible speaks of two types of storms. Storms of correction, when God disciplines us and storms of perfection when God helps us grow. I'll go over those again. Storms of correction when God disciplines us. Storms of perfection when God helps us to grow. Jonah, as I mentioned earlier, was in a storm because he disobeyed God and had to be corrected. Peter and the disciples are in a storm because they obeyed Christ and had to be perfected. So as you are going through a storm, ask yourself, what's the purpose behind the storm? Am I in a storm of correction or am I in a storm of perfection? Storms are designed to test our confidence and our resolve. So placing your confidence in God is so very important. Storms will try to whip, deplete, and shatter our confidence. The disciples' confidence was torn in this instance. They were terrified, tired, and looking death in the face. However terrified they were, in the distance, they could see the master walking from wave to wave. So even as we are going through, as we learned and went over about a month ago in the book of Habakkuk, we are to see the storm, see past through the storm, then beyond the storm. The next section in this particular book says, entrust your confidence to him. You must always remember whenever confidence is in the house, once again, confusion lurks in the hallways. Are you really confident? Who is your confidence in? Then it said, demonstrate your courage in him. There were all kind of distractions around Peter. God called him to him. Come on. And Peter began to walk on the water. But he took his eyes off of Jesus and looked at the surrounding 
waters around him. His mind, no doubt, flashed back to what had just transpired through the night on the ship being tossed with the cargo and that no matter what they had tried, it had failed. And we ourselves, we do that. We take our eyes and our focus off of what God told us to do. And we look at naysayers. What didn't go right before? Being in a stagnant position. This is what we go through. We take our eyes off of God. Some naysayers that are around us are those who tell us you can't do that. You'll never make that happen. That has never been done before. Have you ever heard these words? I don't think you're cut out for that. And that's just a waste of time and money. Those are distractions that will come against your journey in life, the dreams that you have, your purpose, your position within the kingdom of God. Just because you are called by God and the mission that you are about to do is, is focused on God does not exempt you from naysayers. It does not exempt you from those coming and, and saying to you, mm, I just don't think it's going to work. But remember who called you. Remember who, 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 who anointed you for what you are about to do. I am a firm believer that if he equipped us, if he called us, if he equipped us, if he anointed us, to do a certain task, and it is for the furtherance of his kingdom, my faith should be in him. No matter what it looks like, my faith should be in the one who equipped me and called me, that I am to carry out this particular task. It won't be easy. There are some days that yes, you will want to throw in the tire you, you, you will want to throw it all in, the, the tire, the car. You will want to throw in everything. But keep your eyes and your focus on God. Go to God and confess to him, you know what? I'm tired. And I seem to keep going in circles. And it doesn't seem that I am getting anywhere with this mission. But you really are. You're taking time to study, to be equipped. Your prayer life has improved. You're listening to God. You're not going on your own ability, but you are going on His ability alone. If we take the focus off of us, and what we think we can do and realize that without him we can't do anything but through him we can do all things just reading a few chapters in this book I needed those reminders and those words of encouragement and sometimes we will be in a place that we are separated from everyone because God wants to get our attention. And we are going to need that encouragement. And you have to get into a place that you will sometimes have to encourage yourself. A matter of fact, always be in a position, have that mindset that I'm going to have to encourage myself. Because picking up the phone and talking to someone is not an option. But getting in prayer, getting in the word of God, and finding spiritual words of encouragement through reading material is your encouragement. 
it is there to help pull you out of that stagnant, sorrowful position that we can push ourselves into. If the enemy can keep us at doubt, lack of faith, he will hinder your learning process because you will actually shut down because you're questioning it all and you're, you're really saying I stepped out on faith and it seems as if I'm going to fail I see no change I keep trying this I keep trying that and but when are we going to let God lead He truly said if we would seek his face, humble ourselves and pray. There are some things that we need to do. And he said, those things shall be added unto you. And then again, we must remember to not look at things and to seek things and to ask for things, but just seek God. Just seek him, just seek his knowledge and his understanding, the revelation of the word, his word. Seek him. And that is not an easy thing to do when everything else is going on all around you. How in the world am I going to keep my focus and stay in prayer when this storm is brewing and I am in the midst of the storm? But one thing I learned on this last hurricane that came through Florida is I kept hearing the weatherman saying there's peace and calm in the eye of the storm it's the winds and the rains and the outer bands so keep your eye on Jesus he is the eye of the storm. He is the controller of the storm. And we need to encourage ourselves. And that is why we are here at Motivation Speaks with Angel Ferguson because we want to keep you encouraged. We want to help build you up. We all have those times of testing. We all have those times of discipline and those stretching and times of growth. But we are here to lift you up in prayer and to encourage you along your Christian walk. That the things that you take in in your spirit which are of God, shall overflow into all areas of your lives. We pray that nothing is lacking in your life. But seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all his righteousness. We're going to continue to, to read in this book when you don't know what to do what should you do by the late reverend author t jones if you would like a copy of this book we do have it here in our bookstore motivation that inspires bookstore the price of the book is ten dollars each we can always mail you a copy of the book or you can stop by the bookstore at 7402 North 56th Street, Suite A and B, Tampa, Florida, 33617, to purchase a copy. And as we close each podcast, stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way.